Hello and welcome to episode 45. It's Emmanuel Shu in San Francisco again and me, Jan Wosho in Singapore. And we have a very special episode. We've made it finally to 5,000 subscribers and I think it's been almost a year now that we're doing this podcast and we thought it would be great to do like a little bit of a special. So we actually asked you guys over the last week to send us your most uh, burning questions that you have um, and we will try our best to answer all of those. So we collected quite a few and, and thank you to everyone who sent us the questions. Um, it is, it, there are far too many questions to go through all of them um, it would take us like five hours to, to do that. So um, we will, we kind of group the questions and we kind of um, put questions together that kind of sounded the same or well, going to the same point. And um, we'll see, we'll see, we'll try to, we'll, we'll try to get to most of them. Um, and um, yeah, let's get started. So um, first we'll, we'll have some really light questions talking about or asking questions about the podcast. And um, people were curious, uh, very curious in terms of um, what we actually like about doing the podcast and, and kind of what our favorite episodes are. Do you have any do you have any thoughts on that, Emmanuel? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I uh, well, the whole point of the podcast was trying to, uh, I think, initially to demystify the industry and all that. But I think it, it kind of kind of turned into something a little bit more uh, touching on inspiration and mental health and, you know, all these deep sort of, I think, a little deeper issues, which I, I think are great and uh, hopefully uh it has helped people and and i i certainly really enjoy the ones that we actually get kind kind of deep in you know like that that's my favorite i mean i it's not like one single episode but i i i really like like talking to guests that can go deep and talk about you know like things that happen like with coley was great mm. you know like when he you know shared with us you know sort of you know what alcoholism is and 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 how it affected people uh in the industry uh i stuff like that i love so i mean you know sharing uh one of the big parts is is getting feedback when um like like the two old episode and stuff that it's really sort of helped people realize hey i can still do this uh even you know at whatever age you know th that kind of thing those i really like so yeah i mean that that's some of my favorites what about yours yeah, I don't. Um, what I like about the podcast, yeah, I think it, initially I had all these ideas about like, oh, I wanted to do this and I wanted to discuss this, and only to realize that, um, well, I, it was it was it was a nice discovery process over the last year to kind of hear or see what resonated with people, and 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 I mean, one of the it, it's always a bit of a gamble to see which episode really strongly resonate with the audience and 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 that kind of discovery process was one of the big surprises and learning experience over the over the year i i wanted to talk mm. all about like technical stuff and business and that kind of thing only to realize that yeah the mental aspect is what uh, the mental struggles and 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 what does it mean to be an artist and all these kind of things and and hearing from guests about their struggles and that they have sometimes very different challenges or sometimes very similar kind of challenges than like compared to what we have been going through and and what we're going through right now so that was that was really really great and um favorite episodes yeah i don't i don't necessarily i think anisa's episode was was really great um i think yeah the the two old one is like a, i think our all-time favorite um who would have thought that 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 became our most watched episode right so um but yeah the the thing i yeah, enjoy the amazing, most yeah. the, the thing i enjoy the most i think is is the the messages and the emails the comments that we get from people and and um uh, that that really talk about and we, i just got another one and and then how how people really like the content that that we put out and how it really has helped them to understand better what they do and and uh, even even 
like veterans of like 10, 20 years reach out and, and, and say how much it helped them and they wish they had this kind of podcast when they would have started out. So um, that, that, that's been really great. That's been really great. Yeah. That's very encouraging. And, uh, but, but, you know, I, I also saw a question like we could just segue quickly off of that was mm. what are some of the, you know, episodes that, that we thought would do better? <laughs> uh, because, this, you know, like, I, I mean, we, we talked about this and I was like, mm. wow, I mean, like, like uh, uh, some of the, you know, you never know which ones are going to, you know, like more people are going to resonate with and less, uh, some are less. But I mean, it, it, we were just talking about the, the latest one. Remember the, uh, uh, the lawyer? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That was, we were like, oh my God. It was like, <laughs> like, going to be like a total information and, you know, people would love it, but. Man. it's weird yeah 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 it's <laughs> it's really it's really a mystery and and for for some of the episodes where i'm like taking so many notes and i feel like oh there's so much in there nobody watches them and and i don't i don't <laughs> get it i mean I, I guess people people click on the thumbnail or they they they, they if they if, if there's somebody i guess you're slipping on the thumbnail, man you're slipping your thumbnail skills yeah, are slipping. <laughs> if there's somebody on the thumbnail that they don't think is interesting that they don't know, then they don't click on it, even though it's like so full of information. And, and I think the, um, the, the, the episode about, about the copyright laws is so crucial for people to understand. And, and uh, I think that's, that's really underrated. And I mean, there've, there've been some like really great guests that we've been talking to and I'm like, people need to watch this more, right? Like th what I, what I find the funniest out of everything is that, I think about half of the questions that we got, I'm like, hey, we did an episode about that. Like, why don't you watch that? It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. can you can you tell me about rates? And I'm like, dude, we did a rates episode. It's like, can you talk? Me, can you tell me about freelance? And I'm like, dude, we did like so many things about like or like the question, oh, what sh what are the big mistakes? I mean, like, hey, we did an episode about what not to do, where we go through all our mistakes. And I'm like. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, but it's hard you know i mean like honestly what is this 45? Mm, 45 like like you know you can't expect everybody to to remember all 45 episodes and yes some they of should them they probably <laughs> 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 they probably just you know they've just been listening here and there and i think whatever catches their attention but yeah no, but no, yeah no, i mean joking, if it's yeah. got anything to do with that kind of stuff we probably have covered it <laughs> To some degree, um, right? But it's great. It's yeah. good to know. Anyway, is there and so t just uh, just one more thing? I mean, talking about like if if you could invite anybody, that one person, if you could invite anybody, and, and Zachary Berger was asking that, uh, who would it be? Who would be your dream guest? You tell me yours. What What, what do you mean? Now you for <laughs> um, <laughs> thinking about it? I would be. Ah, oh, it's difficult. That is really I, difficult. I think, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll lead it off. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that, first of all, I, I mean, personally for me, I don't think that, I mean, we've talked enough about, you know, like what guests should we have on? And I think we're very, very careful about who we want to bring on because we want to make sure it's somebody that, that can bring a lot of value, not just high profile, right? I mean, but somebody interesting. Mm. Um, and I find that that is actually really hard to find, uh, you know, I, I mean, so it wouldn't, you know, when it comes to like dream guests, you know, of course it would be people that have, you know, like big accomplishments, right? Mm. I mean, we talked about getting uh, Simon uh, Stalin, Stalin Hog, was it his last name? Oh yeah, yeah, the Swedish guy, yeah. Yeah, because just bec for the fact of, you know, being able to be an illustrator and then do a Kickstarter and then go to, you know, make your own TV series, I think, that's very interesting, you know, uh, to, for me at least. Mm. Uh, so we agreed on that, but I mean, I think there are a lot of, uh, you know, cinematographers and filmmakers that are also really interesting. There's just so many people. Um, I don't know that for me, there's like this one person. Mm. Well, was there like one for you, but you're like, ah, oh, man, I gotta, I really want to get that person on. Gandhi, I don't know. I have no idea. No, you uh, talked about David. Uh, what? Uh, what was uh, the, that director? Oh, David Fincher. Uh, yeah, that would be great. No, 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 no. David Fincher, the Shazam guy. Oh yeah, yeah, David Sandberg. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to get him on. I love, I love his story and I love his YouTube channel. So, I don't know if he's listening or if anybody who works with him is listening. 
it would be great if you get him on. I, I, I love his story and I love his, his, uh, his attitude, his personality. So that would be somebody great. But yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take David Fincher as well. If, if he has time, I don't know. Anybody <laughs> knows him, hook us up. Exactly. So, okay. okay that, anyway, let's move on. That was, that was a little bit about the podcast itself. Um, there's, of course, a lot of questions about... Um, Oh, there was a question. Who creates the awesome thumbnails? And that's, that, that stays hidden, okay? Uh, nobody. <laughs> Look, everybody knows, man. <laughs> yeah. I already wrote a million times. Yeah. Like, Jan and I, like, just as an antidote, I mean, Jan and I, I, I remember there was a time when I tried to take that away a little bit, and, and it did not go well. <laughs> um, because Jan had already started with the thumbnails, which I love, and, and I was like, oh, here, you know, like, why don't we use this thumbnail that I made for the Sparth episode? And you're like, no, like no, 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 no. And then in the end, I'm like, you know what? You're in charge. <laughs> Done. You gave up. Never again. You do it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So Jan is responsible. Uh, yeah, it's all and, me. you know, it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Great. Cool. So let's go a little bit into like career stuff. And, um, I think um, there, there were questions about um, which I which I thought were interesting about um, um, a little bit about freelancing and, and I think people who are just starting out people um, or who want to switch careers um, they were asking like so so how do I become a freelancer how do I kickstart that because I guess it, it sounds amazing that you just work from home and you work on all this great stuff but I mean just to just to not dwell on it too long because I think we've touched on the subject um, um, a couple of times like if somebody let, let, okay let's 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 set the expectation that you you your best shot at this is becoming a freelancer because you live in a you live in a in a country where there are just no studios or you can't afford to move or you you have no choice because uh, x y and z and and freelancing is what you what you want to do and and do you have any like i don't know top three or top advice for for somebody who wants to start freelancing in in this industry well, I can only really uh, sort of speak to what happened to me, mm. which, you know, I went from a studio job to freelancing. And, and for me, I would say, uh, uh, you know, providing that your work is solid, mm. right, which needs to be. Mm. Uh, I think it's uh, exposure is important. So people need to know about you. Mm. Uh, that, you know, that's, that's a really, you know, important way for people to start being able to see your work and be able to hire you. I, I can just say for an example, like, uh, like Marceau uh, is the person that I mentored. Um, and I said, okay, well, you know, put it up, make sure that, you know, you're strategic with your social media, uh, and put it up on our station and, uh, and get, you know, people to, sh you know, share it, uh, and, like within, I think he did that project and within, not even within a month, he already was getting job offers uh, to work as a freelancer. So I think, you know, it's getting your work out there however you can. Uh, you know, that, that would be my biggest thing, I would say. Just make sure that you uh, really know and, and don't, you know, one of the biggest things was, because I remember talking to him, was take down the work that's not really successful. You would just make sure you show your best work Put it up there. Make sure people can see it, uh, and uh, that would be the, the the biggest thing to for me to say. You know, that's how how you would start getting. I mean, I assume it's about getting jobs as a freelancer. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the number one thing for me. I mean, you could be in anywhere; it wouldn't matter. Um, and as long as your work, people see your work. That's the only yeah, way to yeah. do it. And and of course, you can also um, like. I mean, I didn't actually, I mean, I didn't do anything to, to help him on that particular, mm. uh, but I mean, you know, if sometimes when you do take classes uh, with uh, people that have connections, if your work is really good, they can also help you out. Um, you know, there's, all, you know, social media for me, that's the only way, really. I mean, you're not going to send in your reel anymore. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, that's, I what, think that's a good, good number one point that 
do great work and and uh, make make sure you you share it properly everywhere don't be picky mm -hmm. about where and like i don't like instagram just share it every any way you can people need to see it if they don't know about you they can't hire you um and and i mean that would also be my number one but another thing to to um recommend i think uh, you need to realize that um I think as much as you need to be a good artist, uh, technically and, and stylistically good, you also need to be a good um, businessman. You need to be a good salesperson. You need to be good at marketing and admin. Um, and I, I think just keeping, keeping, being organized and keeping track of your finances. Like I would, if, if there's any way you can, do not start freelancing if your bank account is empty. Um, have Have savings that you can and that you can at least carry yourself six months into the future without having to comp uh, I mean, I mean, you need to maybe find a way to, to really figure out how much do I need to live? And, and there might be sometimes times where you need to compromise on, you can't buy every PlayStation game. You can't uh, go out to the cinema. I mean, okay, in normal times, you can't do all this all the time. You need to cut back at certain, um, aspects but i think keeping tight track of of uh, how much you have how much you need um is crucial so you don't get tempted by shitty jobs that you don't want to do um and so you keep at least a little bit control over the kind of jobs you really want to do and and that help your career going forward um and and that that would be my my recommendation for the, for that um yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, and, and definitely for that question, I think, you know, a lot of the episodes really do cover like rates, uh, yeah, you definitely. know, how freelancers should should be charging. And, you know, like you said, being careful of, you know, net 30 and how long when do you mm. actually get paid yeah, that's and all that important. kind of stuff. So, you know, just check it out and, you know, look at our portfolio episodes for, you know, more portfolio advice, you know, and that applies to anything really. Right, right, uh, right. But I, you know, yeah, that would be a simple answer would be that yeah. yeah exactly no that's good that's good and then th there were some questions of people that that kind of want to maybe switch from a different industry or, or had questions about a specific thing so there was one question from from victor and he was asking is it possible uh to only do kind of fantasy illustrations in in this day and age he sees a lot of like concept art and and 3d modeling and i guess like a lot of blender and this and that um do, do you feel like it's it's worth like would you recommend somebody to to just go all out into that into that one niche thing or what, what's your take on that well you know i've i've always been a big proponent of the the one knife sharpen mm. that one knife mm. kind of guy that's me because i feel like you can do three things and they'll all be okay mm. uh but the, the the big problem is uh if you nowadays if you want to get noticed and you put your stuff up on our station like we said about the freelancers right yeah the well the the big big problem is um you know the if your stuff is not like really ace or the best it can be because you've, you know, you're, you're diving in a lot of different directions, it's just going to be okay. And you have so much composition. So for me, if you want to be a fantasy illustrator, well, there is a lot of jobs for that. Mm. I mean, you know, if we're talking specifically about fantasy illustration, there's fantasy films, there's book covers, there's fantasy games. So, it's a it's not really that niche right it's just like saying that we do a lot of sci-fi i mean if you really look at it mm. we're really mainly in the world of sci-fi mm. and that's you know that me. hasn't okay. killed us right so uh but you know can we go venture into fantasy yeah i think we can venture into anything we want now because we've had so many years of sort of work experience that we can use those skills to kind of transfer into different genres but i i'd say starting out if you want to focus and say hey you know i i really love fantasy this is where my heart's at and and if you're passionate about it i don't see a problem with it i mean it just depends on the studio some studios want you to be more you know jack of all trades but i prefer to be really good at one thing so that you can do the thing that you enjoy 
and you can kick butt doing it. Mm. That, that's me. Uh, yeah. How about you? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of thoughts about this. I mean, I agree that you should, you should really, if, if fantasy illustration is what really speaks to you, then that's what you should do. Like if, and, and, and you should give it your, your, your best stab, right? If, if dragons, castles, all that stuff, magic, if that is really um, what you want to do, then you should do it. Regardless if you think the, 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 I guess the card gaming thing, magic or any other kind of, uh, I don't know, uh, digital card games are not doing well. Um, there's always a market for kick-ass uh, 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 fantasy illustrators, I think. Now, the thing oh, is, yeah. though, right? The thing is that um, I think there's an inherent danger, but the danger doesn't come from fa fantasy or illustration. I think it, there's a danger in terms of only doing that one thing and being exposed to only one market like let's say like if you specialize only if you if you like fantasy illustrator and you only do digital card games um then you're very exposed to the ups and downs of that industry and that is dangerous um i would recommend that um try to see what else you can do with with that skill and and there might sometimes be compromises you have to do. So, I mean, I can see a lot of application for that kind of skill in, yeah, in book covers, in, um, in, in marketing illustrations, but also like why not venture into, into the concept realm where there's a lot of stuff being produced, like the, the big uh, Lord of the Rings show at Amazon, the, all the spin-offs for Game of Thrones and all this kind of stuff. There is stuff being produced. Um, and, and what you also have, un have to understand, though, if you want to go into that specific niche or if you're already in it and you don't know if you should invest more time in it, is that it's, it's great if you want to do that and, and focus on that one thing. But then you also need to make sure that you are, are absolute, you have absolute standout work. Um, if you want to go in that one direction that you like in the top three or top five people um, that when when people talk about fantasy illustration your name is being dropped right away right that needs to be clear like you can't you can't just like f specialize in that but then you're like nobody really knows about you or you're you're not that great right so that's what you have to I think also consider um, yeah. yeah it still boils down to basically making great work and being a, a really good fantasy i mean it really only takes one image yeah like i mean seriously yeah it really i mean because you know and, and i'm not i don't mean to bring this up again because of marceau um but he, he's a you know like a really good example mm -hmm. of how not a lot of images got him a lot of jobs. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it literally was just a couple images that people go, well, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, then, then and people know that it, it takes a lot to be able to produce these images. So if you have like one image or one series of images where you really put all your heart in, that can count for a lot. That can count yeah. for a lot. Yeah, great. Um, there's uh, another kind of question from Imery Watson about um, specialization, I think, and, and um, which industry to go into. So it seems like he has been working in movies for for the longest time. And um, the, he asked for advice on getting work in games and um, if there's any difference. And is there like, uh, is, is it like a style thing? Do you would, would you say there's a stylistic difference between movies and games? And, and um, how would you go about like appealing to, to American game companies? <laughs> I mean, maybe um, the question is not so great for you since you work predominantly in movies, so. Well, I mean, uh, from my experience, I mean, I did a couple games. Mm. I mean, I actually started out in games. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know that there's a whole big difference. I think that if you're cutting, like Emery is coming from film, if you know being cinematic never hurts a game mm, definitely that never hurts a game especially but these you days. kind of yeah and you but you yeah especially these days but i think as long as you show an understanding of game and gameplay 
Mm. Um, you know, either in the way you speak to them when you do interview or whatever, but it's going to be based on your art. And I think the art is not going to be different. I, I just don't think that people are going to look at cinematic art and go, well, we don't want that. No, but I think it depends on the game, right? I mean, sometimes the game is much more cartoony or it's got a specific look at once and it doesn't need a live action film look then yeah, yeah. obviously you're not going to fit right i think it just depends but if you know if the game is in the look and you know of what you do then i don't think there is much difference to be honest with mm. you i i think working in you know for the studio is going to be different inherently in the way they expect uh work and time and all that kind of stuff but ultimately to get hired i, I don't think that that you have your portfolio is really going to change unless it's a whole different studio. Right. You, you, do you, does that make sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, it, like, like if you're doing like something for like Blizzard, mm. it, it, you know, a live action reel may or may not get you the job. Yeah. Or Riot, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, it depends, right? I mean, there's, in, in terms of getting a job, I think uh, in t like if, if it matters if you're remote or outside, or I think it's it's easier to get jobs in games because there's no union, for better or worse, um, that would control anything. So um, I think there's way more there's way more work um, and, and way more chances to get work in in the games industry and there's more studios w way more, more studios it, right? yeah and and I think also sometimes better paid than in in in, in movies um so but in terms mm. of the kind of work i mean yeah there's there's definitely a, a big influx of the kind of cinematic style into the game into into games in general and this is only getting more right and then you have like prime examples of something like last of us which really borrow a lot from cinema and and there's a clear overlap right but then there's also i think I think stylistically, like in terms of the design in general, I think there's, there are slight differences because, yeah, like you said, gameplay dictates certain things and, and the technology in terms of like, okay, like uh, in, play, in games like uh, Call of Duty, like they might look cinematic, but everything is all about gameplay and how wide an alleyway is, how many things are on the floor, how high a crate can be, and all these things are determined by gameplay. And it's all about reaction, supporting that, that like reaction time of, of people shooting each other. And, and there need to be certain lighting decisions made, certain silhouette uh, um, um, decisions have to be made. And they might not always be realistic, they might not always be cinematic, but they all come down to gameplay. And I mean, if you if you look at stuff like yeah, Blizzard or like uh, stuff like uh, like Fortnite and and uh, Titanfall and all these games, I mean, they they have some some realistic um, inclinations. But I mean, it's it's also about being able to push it further, right? It doesn't always have to be a costume that fits a person, right? It doesn't always have to have the correct um, proportions and, and and stuff like that. Um, there's, that's where also a lot of difficulty, I think, comes from adapting um, video game designs for a live action movie. You can be a lot more free. You can explore a lot more. You can go a lot more crazier in video games. You can push it a lot more. You can be a more stylized and, and try something completely different because you really do not have any restrictions whatsoever other than, yeah, what the gameplay is about. Yeah. So I think if, if you ever wanted to try out something crazier, um, and not w and not have to think about like oh okay they can't build a set out of this oh this is going to be too expensive and blah 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 um, that kind of stuff like doesn't really exist it doesn't matter if you make a, a, a it doesn't it doesn't matter if you make a, a I don't know an interior like a hundred meters high or ten meters high um, whereas there might or be out of glass or out or of glass concrete, or whatever right yeah. it's, I mean there are technical considerations in terms of the the hardware and and certain things but it's it's different kind of considerations right so mm. um and i think there there's nothing really stopping you from doing it it's just about getting used to these different set of um, um limitations and different set of considerations but then yeah i mean you can totally make your way into either into either mm. industry i think um mm. cool so yeah there also were some more of the like uh, i think <laughs> Um, career-oriented um, topics that we wanted to discuss. And then we also have quite a few questions that 
I would group into like, I don't know, mental, um, um, the artist's struggle and um, like the, the thinking processes behind it. And I, wanna, I wanted to talk a little bit, um, maybe more in depth about these. Um, maybe let's start with like a, with like a more um, um, easygoing one. So Anand was asking, um, how, do you, how do you relax after a stressful day of thinking a lot of designing a lot what do you do to unwind mm, i mean I, i i mean i don't really uh i mean for me uh because i'm a night kind of a, a big night person mm -hmm. um in terms of my work uh a lot of times what i do is i wake up and i prepare for the day uh, more than i unwind at night Uh, you know, which, you know, I, I mean, I think I need to get better at unwinding, but I mean, I, I'm sleeping well, so I don't really have an issue. But what I do is um, I try to do exercise in the morning mm -hmm. um, so that I can actually really, it makes me feel really good and energized for the day to really be able to face it. Um, and it, uh, that, that's been working for me really 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 well mm -hmm. and now sometimes at night i play games <laughs> that's ah, how i unwind that's good uh, uh, but but i i do you know i because when i'm playing a game uh you know it's like a strategy game but i i, I don't um i don't think about anything else and and i don't think about work i mean i just think about what's my strategy for that game <laughs> so it's actually quite good for me in that way i don't know that it's relaxing but it's it helps me unwind mm, that's good um What about you? I, oh, I'll, I'll do a lot of things. I mean, um, oh, I have a lot of opportunity to do things, I guess. So, I mean, I, I, I exercise. I, um, I run at least three, four times a week. Um, that, that really helps me. I used to listen to music to get additional input. I'm like, hey, I'm wasting this hour, so I need to get mm -hmm. input from like other podcasts or yeah. listen to something or catch up on this, catch up on that. But I, I completely stopped doing that. It's, it's While you run. While, while I run, it's it's just me and, and and my legs and the and the pavement and nothing else. And it's really agonizing in the beginning to just have no input and and just let your thoughts kind of rumble on. And and but that that goes away quickly. And that's m like one of my key times to to just uh, process information and and process the decisions I made, um, have new ideas, have better ideas. And, and more often than not, I have, I'm running and I have to stop running to the, take a note or take a picture mm -hmm. of something because I'm like, oh shit, like this is really good. I need to, I need to remember mm -hmm. that. Um, that happens a lot. Um, I also listen. Is this daytime or nighttime? I, I, or? I usually run in like around 5 or 6 p.m. I, I, I tried everything. I tried getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning, like, you know, all successful people do to get more out of the day. And, Ooh, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'll, I I'll lie on the pavement and sleep there. I don't, I, I'm not a morning person. <laughs> um, uh, in Singapore, it's too hot during the day. Otherwise, I probably would run around 3 or 4 p.m. But you have to wait until the sun sets. Otherwise, you, you're going to get a heat stroke. Um, But that's that's kind of like my my peak time for just like physical physical exercise for me. Um, mm. and other things I, I do is just um, I don't know play with my kids, build some Lego. Um, that that gets my oh, that gives me always a different perspective. Like when I'm when mm. I'm really angry about a client email or angry about a about a design problem I can't solve, then um, it's, it's, it's great to just un like see that, I don't know, your kids are quite carefree and they, and they don't have all these problems mm -hmm. and they, they um, approach everything a bit more innocently, right? Um, other stuff I do is like I listen to a lot of music, so that helps me. And I really only listen to music. I don't do anything else. Um, or like read a good book or something like that. Um, I mean, there's many, many things to, to do. And um, yeah, yeah, I think, I'd, I think the main yeah. takeaway here is make sure you step away. Yeah. And that has nothing to computer. do with like mm. work. Like I don't, like, I don't like uh, look at art books of like concept art or whatever. I'm like, no, 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 I don't, I don't do that at all. So that's quite, quite key to me. Um, cool. Yeah, that was great. No, um, let's see. What else do we have? We have a question here. Um, 
Uh, let me see what would be best next. Uh, yeah, let's do this one from Rimas Albert. He asked, um, I do great art for work. So I'm thinking he talks about client work, right? But then he feels very intimidated when he comes to producing like personal art on his own. And he, he feels like he can rarely produce anything at all. Um, I don't know. Do you have, were you ever well, in a situation I mean, like I, that? Um, I don't think that I've, I, I mean, I understand the question and I think, you know, without a lot of context, I can only sort of guess, you know, uh, at what he's, uh, what he actually, you know, who he is and what he actually is um, meaning to say. But I mean, for me, I think a lot of intimidation comes from um, a lack of confidence um, in your own voice, right? I mean, because when you do work, you know, cl uh, when you do client work, you're solving their problem. So mm -hmm. it's just the client has to like it. And if you've solved it, then you're okay. But when it comes to personal work, you don't know if, because in a sense, you're your own client, then you're doing stuff for yourself, but you also need the acceptance of, you know, I, I assume the outside world, you, you know, unless you're not aiming to share it, but if you're going to share it, then it comes with a lot of burden of, will they like it? And it's always that will they like it that gets you to be like, oh man, maybe I don't even want to put it out there. Um, maybe I don't even want to, you know, and that intimidates a lot of people because now you're being judged by not by one client, but by millions of people out there who is your sort of audience. And I think it's, I think it takes a certain amount of confidence to say, hey, you know, this is just what I'm doing. I don't care. Uh, I need, you know, I want to put it out or not, but you know, if you do put it out, then you have to kind of, you know, have a thick skin. And I think we talked about this, but I, I, I think that that's one reason why a lot of people are, are in, you know, because if he, he used the word intimidated, I mean, I think that's a really big reason why a lot of people don't want to post. Um, hmm. they may do the personal work. They don't want to post it. Uh, if he's talking about actually not wanting to do it, it, it still might be that, but just at a more extreme level, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I think maybe for the people out there, uh, you know, I know it's easy to judge art, you know, because, you know, everybody has an opinion about what they see. But, you know, just remember that, you know, it's somebody else's personal work. Um, and just to be a little bit more kind, <laughs> make sure that you're kind with your remarks. Um, because I think we can all do a little better in that front, you know, just to say, Hey, be more encouraging. Um, or, or if you don't have anything good to say, to not say it, you know, just to, to leave it be, hmm. uh, because I think out there, a lot of people like to criticize and judge. And I think, um, you know, it's just a lot of people, you know, like Remus is quite intimidated. And I think, I think that this may have a lot, to do with it. What do you think? Uh, that's an interesting point. I actually didn't even think about that. Um, I was more thinking, hmm, I was more actually thinking in terms of like thinking that there are different kinds of people out there. And I mean, we always, I mean, we, we think that that personal work is quite important in terms of your like um, growth as an artist and, and whatnot. But I think the fact is that there are some people out there who don't like doing personal art and they're completely okay with just doing client work and they, they love that and they don't, don't, they don't necessarily need to do personal work. And I think, I think there's nothing wrong with that, nothing at all, right? Um, so I'm, I would more ask like, where does that, where does that feeling of like, oh, I need to do personal art come from? Is it, is it, is it like, does it come from a point of view of like, oh, everybody else is doing it and I need to do it as well? Or does it come from like, I mean, something I would understand, like the necessity of having marketing material for yourself if everything you've worked on is still under NDA and doesn't come out for another two to three years. Like, where is that coming from? Like, where, so where's the need for that personal work coming from? Do you, mm -hmm. do you really mm -hmm. want to do it? If, if not, and you do great work for clients, then what's the, then why beat yourself up over having to produce personal work? Like, you don't Yeah, I mean, it, 
Yeah, that's a, a good point because um, I talked to some, you know, sort of really high profile artists uh, and and uh, this person doesn't do any personal work. Mm. And and he told me, hey, you know, I just I don't you know, I don't I love working for clients and I love working on the problem, you know, yeah. which is film. And when I'm done, I'm tired. I don't want to really do any more personal work. I think that's fine. Um, I think as long as, you, you know, you're not like saying, hey, I really want to do personal work, but I'm intimidated. Uh, mm. You know, I, I think as long as that's not the case. I mean, if you're like, hey, I don't really want to like there's nothing wrong with not doing personal work. I, I think absolutely nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I, I actually think that, you know, if you really like doing client work and that's it, mm. you, you know, afterwards you need a break. It's totally fair. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. So. Cool. Yeah. OK. Um, Another one here from Raymond Tan. He's asking you, like, he's asking us, how how do we personally define success, or how how would we determine if we are a successful artist? Are you successful? Well, oh, I uh, think it's a, it, that's a purely you know personal. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. depends what success means so to you. What, you know? what what does it mean for you? Uh, I think success is if you're happy doing it. If you, you know, for me, it's, 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 I mean, it's doing something that brings you joy, right? Uh, and if it, if it st stops doing that and, and there has been jobs that, that has happened, mm. then, then that, at that moment, that's not a success to me. Uh, and I'll move on, you know, I mean, success, I mean, I, I don't equate that to money mm. or, or exposure or the kind of films you work on. I really just, I just, for me, success is like happy are you in genuinely enjoying yourself and being happy doing what you're doing and if you are then then that's success to me how about you yeah i mean from i'm too german uh, no i mean it would be great <laughs> money it, it would be great <laughs> if if money wouldn't play a role but i think what's important for me or where where i would see success what would i i would feel like myself to be successful is that if if I would be able to strike a balance um, of okay, I can, I can provide for for the family. I can I can have a good life, but at the same time, I also have um, the ability to uh, sometimes step away and and just do my own thing for a while. And and that balance has I think more to do with it. it Yes, it's an economic uh, consideration, but I think it's also something that you need to you need to learn in terms of like your thinking, your attitude. Um, that yet you feel like, hey, okay, I've I've reached my goal for the year, um, and and uh, now I really need to force myself to do something for myself, and 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 recognizing that. So I don't know. There's a, there's a certain level of maturity. I think that that that. That I that I would need that some somebody would need to to say like okay enough money uh, let's do something interesting and and um, that for me is like that then I would consider myself successful if I can make these mm -hmm. these, um, these decisions these yeah. decisions in in a in a more controlled manner and not like the way I do it now, which is a complete mess of like, oh shit, like I need money or like, oh bloody hell, like I, where, where's the entire year gone? I have, I still haven't done anything with my personal stuff. And it's just like, I, I think, I think for me, success is really if, 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 if I'm more of a, if I'm more proactive in, in, in these kind of decisions mm. rather than completely reactive to like uh, oh an email comes in like oh you want to work on this and i'm like sure and you throw everything out the window um oh. yeah 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 so th that, <laughs> we've all know, been there <laughs> always been there so so that that i think would be success for me and right and everything else i think would kind of come out of that um because i i mean i know that i'm i'm gonna be less stressed i'm gonna be more happy and all these kind of things if i if I know that I'm not going to run out of money tomorrow and when I can really fully concentrate on, on something creative I want to do. And, and, mm. and I think that that's what's needed for me. So, yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, two interesting, two interesting questions. One from Nicholas about, 
um, he talks about the sunken cost fallacy. So um, basically, that means um, if if like what kind of impact has um, the past on the future on future decisions? So he's talking specifically about. Um, he has invested a lot of time into a piece of artwork, but he's really not sure if this is actually good. And so he's he's asking like, um, while doing a personal project or learning something new or software or design or whatever, like um, like to what point do you bring something before you or like how much time do you invest in and and are you are you afraid at some point that if you invested like two weeks into it that to throw it away would you still do mm. that even though for the sunken cost fallacy like it, as a reminder you should only consider what makes sense going forward and you should forget about the past so basically um what he's saying is that and what I'm saying in a roundabout way is that, I mean, you spend two weeks and that's my opinion, like you spend a month on it and it looks shit and, and you're afraid to throw it away because then you feel like, hey, I've invested so much into it. Um, mm. Like it's it's like like I'm, I'm a failure if I if I don't if I'm not able to make this better or save it in some point but i mean my my so i go first right but I'm, my opinion <laughs> okay. is like because I'm, I'm i'm rambling on here um it doesn't matter how much time you invested if you if you invested two months into it and and it looks like shit then it's just just about time to to throw it away and i i do that all the time and um and it doesn't matter because there's probably one aspect or some aspects of it that you you learned that you learned something from right it, and it doesn't always have to be like you have to kind of um disconnect yourself from the end product i think you have to focus more on on the process itself on the design process and what you learned so w one thing i i actively do and 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 that kind of came out of necessity is with with my tutorials that um i i usually do a lot of research about what i want to do and then i kind of go through it and in most cases the the first version of what i built for that tutorial looks like complete crap um but I know that what I've learned from this exploration process is that I kind of figured out what can I show, what works, what doesn't work, what what makes sense in this in this workflow, what makes sense in this design process. And then I can make better decisions about what to include in the tutorial. And in, in some cases, it even completely changes what the what the tutorial is about. Like I had some idea before of like, oh, I want to do I want to do X, but then I come across something that is like, oh, hey, Y is a lot more interesting. Um, so I do that, and and I think it's it's um, being open to these kind of um, developments and open to these kind of happy accidents and that kind of thing that 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 where you come up with really cool stuff and then in the same way that i i built something for the tutorial and then for the recording i actually build it again but i realized that the second time around i'm doing it i'm i'm a lot more conscious of the design decisions i make and i'm a lot more clear in the process because i've already gone through it so that the result the second time around is a lot better than the first time around I did it. So, I mean, sunken cost fallacy, yeah, definitely kicks in all the time and you should really listen to it. If if the thing you worked on for a month isn't worth it, then, then just abandon, make a new one. It probably will take you only a week the next time with that workflow to make something that's a lot better because you've already went through all the shit um, and you, you're able to throw it out. So that, that's my that's my take on that. No, that that's that's interesting because I think for me I don't know that there is really a sunken cost fallacy in my dictionary when it comes to art mm -hmm. because I feel like any time you put any effort into anything, it's kind of like what you're saying is you're gonna gain something from it. Mm -hmm. 
uh, it's just a matter of whether you think the outcome is worth it, right? Because you know it's you know it's only a sunken cost fallacy if the outcome you you think oh well okay I wasted my time you know but you but the truth is you never do um, as long as you're doing it with intent uh, and you're really learning something and we you know there's I don't think there's a painting I do that I don't learn something from. Mm. Uh, you just have to be aware, like, okay, today I'm going to try to make this better. But um, I, I, get, I get that, uh, uh, but I have folders of images that I've spent days, weeks, months on that are going to stay there because I, I learned a lot from it, but the outcome is uh, not what I think it should be. And I wasn't able to solve the problem. Mm. I mean, I, it doesn't look right. I, I mean, I, I, I can literally, right now, I already have an image in mind like that I did. I'm like, I couldn't get it right. But it's, you know, also kind of sometimes uh, learning from that whole process. And then the next image after that um, got a lot from, you know, the failures or mm. whatever, you know, you've learned from that image. So for me, I think there's no such thing as sunken costs and, and then it's... Uh, you know, it's it's like almost like a negative, like oh, I put so much into this, and you know, didn't you know, it didn't work out. But I, I think everything works out it, as long as you go into it with intent, mm. um, and really try to learn each stage, right? I mean, if you know, you there's no way you can learn a piece of software and it's sunken cost. I mean, it, it'll come back f to help you. Mm. Uh, it, it maybe not immediately, but it will come back. So that that's what I think. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the question comes from like everybody's uploading stuff all the time and it seems like everybody's uploading everything they have um, in their folders and there always is like that urge to like, oh, I spent so much on it and I haven't uploaded anything in the, in the past two weeks and I better put the finishing touches on this and upload it and then just call it and then just have something to upload, right? But I think that's that's really not the right way to yeah, go I, about I think, this. I think no one has a timer on when you're uploading something. Mm. Uh, no one's eagerly bi biting their nail, waiting on the computer for you to upload your work. Mm. Take your time. Mm. I mean, wh wh what's, what's it gonna hurt? Nobody knows when you're gonna upload. The worst thing would be you rushing to upload, and I've done this, mm. upload and I'm like, delete, because I just saw something, I, I was like, oh no, you know, like, mm. oh God, that's horrible. I had to repaint that part. You know, I just saw it, mm. you know, and because I was rushing and because I thought, well, you know, I, I got to put it up there and, you know, you know, who's dying to see this right now? Yeah. Who's, you know, who can't live seeing, no, nobody. I think get it right, feel good about it, then put it up there. Mm, exactly. I mean, I think it comes just from the fact that Anytime you open Instagram, anytime you open Twitter, there's this barrage of, of, of images that kind of gives you the yeah. illusion that everybody posts all the time, but which is absolutely not the case. And then, you, I don't know, you, you check your favorite artist that, that produces consistently killer work. And then you just go to his feed and his page and you realize that he only po posted about two new images in the last quarter. And you're like, oh, but I thought he did more. And I'm like, and, and then you realize, oh, no, it's, it's not at all the case, right? They, they, yeah. Good work takes time, right? For anybody, for any, nobody can, nobody yeah, can I mean, consistently yeah. push out new images three times a week and do client work and have time off. That is just impossible, right? So, yep. Anyway. Uh, here we have an interesting one from Kate Cruz and she's asking um, if you can talk about bouncing back from jadedness that <laughs> she thinks we all experience at some point in the industry. Rekindling, just doing art with the same fire we had as all well, teenagers or whenever we started out. That is, that is tricky. Yeah. That is tricky. The older you well, get, the worse it gets. Yeah with the jaded yes <laughs> yes and no yeah, yeah no yes yeah, and no yeah. i mean because i think it depends on personality i mean personally um 
I don't consider myself jaded uh, just by the mere fact of I, 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 there are things that I think are wrong um, sort of with the industry or, or that aren't things that I like, but I'm still very excited to work on things. Um, I still look forward to, to making good art for my clients. Um, and I still love the, the properties that I'm working on. Um, but I, I, I ha there are, have been times when I feel more jaded than others. And I think those are the times when I really have to um, take a step back. Um, and I think take a break and work on your own stuff to re you know, any time you want to rekindle your own fire is you got to go where the fire began. Uh, if it began with photography or if it began with some form of painting uh, for yourself, that's what you go back to. Uh, even if it's blocking a weekend out just to do your own painting uh, for nobody but yourself. Um, I think that's the way to come up kind of come back and really uh, figure out what you liked in the first place. Uh, and, and it will help you recenter, uh, especially, you know, before those times of getting, working on the project, you know, if you actually take a breath and don't accept a job yet and sort of take a step back, you'll see that is this a job you actually want? Um, you know, because I think a lot of times we're, you know, we're, we are jaded, you know, mm. and then we're like, ah, oh, it's just another one of those. But you got to take a step back and, and see whether it is or it is not. Um, but I mean, I'm assuming this person is just talking about like you're, you're jaded now. You're, you're basically like hating on the industry, which a lot of people we talk to are, uh, myself included sometimes. But I think for me, if I ever get to that point, I have to step back. I mean, that's, the biggest thing and, and then re-engage with something that I really like doing. And then it kind of comes back, but I think mm -hmm. stepping back and taking a break is always the best thing for me. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. Oh, well, what about you? Uh, you're, you're more jaded than me. Yeah, probably <laughs> or cynical or whatever you want to call it. It's, um, I think it's tricky. It's, and I, I mean, I'm trying to think about where it comes from and what I can do about it. And it's, it's not easy. Right. I mean, I think there's, there's something, there's just something that happens when, you have as a teenager this very or when you start out or when you're just dreaming about doing it you have all these ideas about what it must be like and 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 you you do enjoy the end product so much right it's like oh i love movies i love video games like there ca there cannot be an a better job than actually help producing these um these these things that have changed my life that have inspired me that seem to be touching people all around the world and and to a certain degree that's true i think it is it is it is a great a great job to have um, and it's great to be able to use your creativity that to to help make these products that mean so much to a lot of people um, but i think there's also an inherent danger that once you make that step from turning your hobby into a job and and suddenly kind of step behind the curtain um and see how this stuff gets made i think a certain aspect of that magic disappears um like when you see what a mess sometimes making a video game or making a movie is and what it takes and that there is really no magic that happens behind the scenes that it's all hard work and and awful meetings and people yelling at each other and people taking credit and this and that i think um and and also like people coming together to make something bigger than what they could have achieved by themselves so the on the positive side but i think there, there's something that just gets lost and then like, like I said before, the best time is when you get an email about somebody asking you to help out on a project. That's the best time of any project. And then when you're actually on the project, you, you, you're getting asked to do certain aspects that you really don't like. Um, like, oh, can you, can you make me 50 variations of X, Y, and Z? And you're like, oh my goodness. And then nothing you, you did on that project ever sees the light of day or you worked on your favorite franchise and the end product is just 
really badly received and really badly done or whatever. So this stuff will inevitably happen when you work on when you when you strive for a career in this industry, it just will happen um, guaranteed. And, and it's really hard, I think, to to maintain that 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 spirit that energy and i think for me i mean of course it happened of course it happened um and and any kind of scenario i think that 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 you could possibly imagine on the negative side happened uh, to me of like terrible people terrible projects projects that didn't go anywhere um um franchises that were dear to my heart that just are like like absolute gar turn turn into absolute garbage um and then you, you and then on top of that of course there's your own development your own taste development of like oh i used to like this but now i'm 20 years older and and i just like different things and these products that i help make are not made predominantly for my age group and my demographic so um there there is inevitably a disconnect happening for not for everyone but for a lot of people um the way i see it and the, what i need to do is like yeah first of all remind myself of these these facts i think that like okay this is for 12 year old uh teenage boys in puberty and they they they, they go off on that and and um i just enjoy something different now um and and i think stepping away from it and just taking a breather and like okay this is this is this is okay right um this is what happens inevitably everywhere um but for me i think it's it's i mean it's difficult right it's really difficult and i i haven't found the surefire way of getting out of it to be honest and and it's it's i think also a realization that okay you you know how to make money with this thing but if it gets to a degree where you just can't stand doing it anymore, then what options do you have? Um, it's, it's, it's one thing to change your career at age 30. It's another thing to change it at age 40 or age 50. Like, how do you, how do you learn to live with, with that, right? And uh, I mean, I, I guess for me, it comes down to finding hobbies, finding ways how I can like breathe fresh air into into what I do and not be afraid to to just try out things that that could lead me in a different direction mm. um and and there's always something where you can push it in in ways that you didn't think were possible and that that could actually open new doors to you that um if you if you jump into the water if you if you're unafraid to to just try something once in a while uh, that that it could open new doors right um and and it takes a lot you of know. guts yeah i think um i don't know if that's enough if if the, if i'm approaching that with enough fire like when i was a teenager um but i just have a lot less energy i think these days than when i was 18 so <laughs> You know, I, I, but you know, the truth, truth of it is, though, I think it's for some people. I think the jadedness or whatever you want to call it is what's fueling that person. Which hmm. I think for you, it's doing that, and it's 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 a mechanism where it's saying you don't really want to do that, you don't really like to do that, but here's something you're. You know, your jadedness also gives you opinions mm. about certain things. I mean, you're definitely a, 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 um, a quite a movie critic and, <laughs> and you have your opinion. But, but hey, look, but the thing is that all this has probably brought it may have brought you somewhere in the end, you know, three years from now, five years from now, looking back after you've directed your f first film, you kind of go, well, that's where it turned. And. You know, it wouldn't it be a shame if you just kept doing something you didn't enjoy doing. Um, and so I actually think for you, it's not that it's an it's not a negative thing. Um, I think you yeah, that's a good but point, ultimately yeah. in the end, uh, taking a break will help. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it listening, will help. listening to your jadedness. That's a good I think that's a good answer to to this question, I think. 
or very thought provoking I, i mean it can it really can take you i mean why are you jaded about something it mm. says something about you uh, yeah. and as long as you can dig into it and figure out what it is and how to make mm. you know it into a positive thing yeah. then i think use it yeah, you know I and see where it goes i mean that, i mean a, a lot of that uh, the jadedness is self-inflicted right so and and it comes from your self-image and i think maybe maybe some part of that is also about how you perceive others how how you how you think that other others perceive you and and your job and and maybe i don't know in 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 kate's circles that that people think she has the best job in the world um but that doesn't really count the only thing that really counts is what you want to do and and how you see that and and it might look fantastic for others but if you're not happy doing it then there's no there's no point doing it right so so i think that's, that's a very 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 deep question um uh, i think it's just ultimately where it comes from mm. and starting from there you know it, it could just be that you're tired and you've Mm. worked on all the films and or games and 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 you've had some good some bad but and you know you're tired and burnt out and, and you maybe you don't break. really have any goals anymore right um, yeah that for for other people like yeah maybe maybe it's more than a break maybe you need a career change yeah i mean who knows or just a, a just a different new goal right that you can work yeah. towards so yeah. um, that can work um great i think that those were some really great questions i mean we still have more um i'm trying to see if there's anything we could ask uh, answer here yeah, how 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 to get rich fast arthur was asking <laughs> i don't know i i have no idea there was an interesting quote though I, um, if we knew we probably we would wouldn't be, uh, be doing we all this had, like, podcast gold chains <laughs> and like we'd be all in like hawaii and you know, laying out in the sun and just like not doing anything yeah, but, but I, i don't i think there's something interesting there though so uh, I just watched something and and there was an interesting quote that somebody uh, told a famous script writer it's like and and they asked him like so how do I how do I write and get rich right by doing so and I guess there could also be like just a, a fair question how do I make art and get rich and and his answer was and he quoted I, th I think something from from that stoic writer epictetus and and he was mentioning that um like you didn't enter that race you didn't enter the race to get rich you entered the race to become a better writer a better artist the race to get rich is an entirely different one and you didn't enter that one if that's what you want to do then you have to take an entirely different path if you want to become a great artist then again that's something disconnected and that is something you should you should you should pursue right and um i i, I just wanted to 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 say that I, i thought that very profound no i mean that's definitely something but i mean also i mean i would say what does rich really mean mm, of course you know right? to to you you know having a day rate of 500 is 500 more than a person who's homeless what exactly, is rich yeah, exactly you know so you know i mean i i we all know it was just yeah, yeah i know but i think question, there's still something but i i think you know i think it's it's definitely being also grateful for what you're doing and the fact that you can earn a living uh, doing it is is already great um but but yeah i mean i i think when you create art it's how can i mean i would want to know more about how to make better art or how to make more personal art or how to have more of a voice versus how do i make more money mm, 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 definitely because <laughs> you know i was thinking you know if i want to make more money uh just go day trade go you know go do stuff that really you know yeah, it's about making money right it's like it's about making money I yeah that like drawing, you said, that race drawing <laughs> for drawing for a living is a very inefficient way to not the worst but a yeah. very inefficient <laughs> yeah. way to make to do that but anyway i think that was that was a a good way to end this episode with a light-hearted question um again thank you so much for sending in your questions and i think before long we'll we'll do another q and a episode i think these are these are quite fun uh, it was great to hear well, let, you. let's see yeah. uh let, let's see how all this does i uh, you know like if it if people really really like it we could always do a, a yeah, part two definitely definitely great so um 
Well, it's it's I think been almost a year since we started, and it's it's been quite a ride, and we're very much looking forward to the next year. And um, well, thanks again for listening. And um, if you like this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you.